Hello, my name is Brandon, and welcome to Retro Reactions, a place where I experience amazing music from the 70s, 80s, and 90s for the very first time. And today we have another new artist alert for the channel. Yes, we're headed all the way back to 1971 and 1972 to listen to Salisbury and The Wizard by Uriah Heep. All right, we'll start with Salisbury. It comes from their album titled Salisbury, which is their second studio album. It's progressive rock and features a 24-piece orchestra. I'm sold instantly. You guys know how I feel about orchestras. Anyway, if you're new here, welcome. Don't forget to hit that subscribe and like button, as well as the notification bell, to join the Retro Reactions community, where it's all amazing music all the time. Here we go.
Wow, wow. I needed a few minutes to recover after hearing that. Did not expect that whatsoever. This song may be the one that affected my emotions the most out of anything I've heard on the channel. Not sure about that. Can't say that for sure, but it's one of a very select few that has got to me in so many ways, so deeply. Incredible. I'm so glad that this is the first song that I've ever heard from Uriah Heep. A perfect introduction to their mastery, their brilliance. A solemn start to the song. I was hooked instantly with those vibes. Uh, a feeling of grand melancholy is what I got. I think I heard some moody blues vibes going on at the beginning. Let me know if you agree. I was definitely transported to another place. Incredible. Um, I love those huge brass melodies that we got. So many of them throughout the song. They were so dramatic and some very unique short brass melodies. I don't think I've ever heard such uh, interesting, mysterious, quick brass lines quite like those before. Incredible. And just one element out of so many elements. I knew because of the orchestra I was going to be in heaven, but wow, did it take me to heaven and beyond. I wrote down, this is genius, all of it. I don't know how much of their music is like this, but I'm blown away by this piece for sure. And then we get this powdery soft voice of David Byron on the right. Really nice. I was in love with the voice already, but later on he shows just how big and strong his vocals can get. I love the versatility. Already appreciate him as a singer. Uh, just such well-written instrumentation here and orchestration. Just complex, beautiful, emotional, so interesting. Clearly I was already blown away within the first few minutes of the song. Uh, there were so many 70s moments in this one, in the music, and the melodies. I love being transported to back then, an amazing era for music. It's not a coincidence that the majority of my songs I've reacted to have been from the 70s. Incredible. Uh, so many epic moments here, so many artistic moments, like that running section, I'll call it. Uh, I did the little running motion because it felt like we were in fast motion with the um, bass, you know, so amazing. The organ, the drums and percussion all dancing together quickly and powerfully to give us this amazing part of the song. I wrote down art at its finest here. Unbelievably creative. So many other amazing moments as well. At one point, we were literally flooded by the organ going here, there, everywhere on the left. Uh, just a big sound, even though it was kind of isolated. And then we got huge brass going on on the right. Again, those working together to create this really unique moment, this really interesting sound. Uh, the feelings were almost indescribable that I was getting throughout this song. Everyone seemed to be playing and giving forth their efforts at at least 200%. But again, it's the arrangement, the masterful arrangement of it all that makes the song. I really need to investigate more on who wrote this masterpiece. Strangely and luckily, this one went by very slow. We were maybe at the halfway mark and it felt like one hour already. Really, really uh, unusual thing to happen. I guess I was just so into it, so lost in it, that it became timeless. Really nice. Uh, they were going through so many human emotions in one song. I already know what it's about. Love, lost love, deep pain. So that makes sense. Uh, again, a testament to their creative power. Everything that they were able to do for me in this 16 or so minutes. And then we get an amazing choir in several parts. Just adding more gold to this gold mine of a song. So much amazing drumming by Keith Baker. So much incredible bass by Paul Newton in this one. But at the two-third mark, we get this awesome, lightning-fast electric guitar solo. I think that was done by their lead guitarist, Mick Box. Correct me if I'm wrong, but he was shining from this point on, and he did more amazing stuff at the end. Just incredible. Um, I got some Led Zeppelin, Heart, Stairway to Heaven, live at the Kennedy Center, Honors Vibes in one section there. Just so grand, so epic, just like that performance was. I'm sure many of you guys are familiar with it. Uh, these musicians are shining the brightest that they possibly can, and for so long, they just kept going on and on, giving us excellence just over and over again in all these different sections of the song. By the end, I just had to surrender. I was so lost in the song's magic. 
I was so overwhelmed by the music. I'm sure you guys could see. I probably look funny here, but that's all right. It just shows how much I connected with the song. And then the last 40 seconds or so was amazing. A good way to come down from that huge energy of what just happened. The sound became very foreboding, yet calming. Uh, we get these glorious woodwinds, these amazing, uh, urgent, sad vocals, I believe. Uh, this guitar and this pounding drum over and over gets faster and faster. You know, his soul was screaming and then his voice literally let out a scream at the end. The pain was all palpable and then boom, it's over. Wow, what a ride. All right, let's talk about the lyrics. I think this one is a powerful and descriptive love song depicting his love and devotion to this special woman. There has been no other like her. Unfortunately, as the saying goes, all good things must come to an end, including this powerful love. Uh, in the depths of lonely despair, he clings to the hope that she will return to him. His love for her is equally as strong as it was on day one. Wow, such well-written, beautiful, sad lyrics that many people can relate to. Uh, you know, just grasping the pain that love can bring, especially when it's lost. And then the music, I think I conveyed pretty well why I already adore this song so much and why it completely blew me away. I didn't think I'd ever do this. I wasn't sure. But this one's getting the Triple Epic Platinum Record Award. Yes, I just had to. So deserving for Salisbury by Uriah Heep, 1971. Thank you so much, David Byron, Mick Box, Ken Hensley, Paul Newton, Keith Baker, and also John Fitty for that spectacular brass and woodwind arrangement. Whew. Hopefully the next song isn't quite as intense. Now we're moving on to The Wizard from the album Demons and Wizards. It was their first single. It hit number 8 in Switzerland and number 34 in Germany. Let's check it out. Tales and he drank my wine. Me and my magic man kind of feel fine. Fear and pain And have the people 
All right, that one was definitely much, much simpler and easy to digest compared to the first one, uh, but still great. You know, we get an expert acoustic guitar intro to start the song by, I believe, Ken Hensley. Let me know if I'm wrong. It's either him or Mick Box, but I think Ken's on that 12-string guitar. Sounded beautiful. Again, strong vocals here by David Byron. I heard shades of Dennis DeYoung this time in his voice. Really interesting. Uh, interesting vocal effects as well. They were doing a lot of echo, messing with the pitch, I think. I love that experimentation and the fact that they were doing it so early in 1972. A big wow. I can definitely see why this was a single. It's a very strong song. It's the length that it needed to be. Nothing more, nothing less. And I definitely heard more Styx vibes going on in the harmonies, in the tone, in the music, maybe a little bit of the melody. Really interesting vibe. I wonder who was influenced by who here, if anything. The bass wasn't really forefront this time, but I love the deep bass tone, you know, sliding around in the background. I think that really interesting bass tone was crucial for me in this one to make the song what it was. And actually, it's one of my favorite elements, even though it wasn't in the front. Really nice. So thank you to Mark Clark for that one. Speaking of Mark Clark, he did some really great backing vocals throughout the song to give that sticks effect and, you know, just to round out a great song. Uh, the whole thing was very simple, but still very satisfying. I could not ask for more here. All right, let's talk about the lyrics. I think this one is a fantastical account of the narrator's chance encounter with a wise old wizard of peace high in the mountains. The more the wizard speaks, the more motivated our narrator gets, filled with fire and energy. Peace is such an easy thing. Why can't it simply always be? I definitely see the spiritual element here. The wizard could certainly represent Jesus. Yeah, so really enjoyed this one for very different reasons. It was nice to hear these two songs back to back, to see the range, what this band is capable of, the contrast there. Uh, this one's getting five golden records, an A score for The Wizard by Uriah Heep, 1972. Thank you so much, David Byron, Mick Box, Ken Hensley, Mark Clark, and Lee Kurzlake. All right, that is it for now. Thank you so, so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Anyway, don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment down below. If you wish to chat about these two songs, I would love to know what you think, especially about Salisbury. So you take care, stay safe, stay hydrated, and remember to let peace, calm, and light into your day and night. And I'll see you next time in the past.